We'll jump right into it. CJ starting on the blue side. Kicking things off with a ban here. And the Zed, yeah, I, w I would think so. <laughs> At least until next week, that Zed should be on the shelf for Mickey. I, I really think that it's smart to take that one away. The question is, is Anarch or Anarchy going to ban the LeBlanc, a frequent ban up against Coco? They certainly are going to take his Azir out of the way, a champion that he prioritized very heavily in the finals. There goes the Nar for Kuve. Kuve, or I mean, um, Ixu. Yeah. Uh, so that's... Ixu's Nar was pretty good. Okay. Yeah, and it's just this patch, especially with the Black Cleaver, it can be very difficult to deal with the Nar in lane, especially if you want to play a melee champion. That Black Cleaver can really prevent you from stopping a split push later in the game. Yeah, I, this is, of course, another just test of when you have a top laner whose champion pool has pretty diversified. I mean, Shy can always fall back on some of the older champions, too, for a tank meta. And then the LeBlanc getting banned out, too, from the CJ side, just preemptively taking things away from Mickey and trying to challenge him into a not as aggressive role on the team. Now, I'm actually surprised that CJ didn't want the first pick. I wonder what their first pick priority is going to be. Could be Maokai here. There's the Shivana ban. Again, that's a bit of a pocket pick for Shy right now. And he was so good on it in the playoffs. Even SK Telecom thinking that it was too dangerous to let him have that. Had great Dragon's Descent into the team. So eliminate that. But that's a nice ban for CJ Antis. Now, what are they going to go with here? The Urgot priority has decreased. Quite overall. a bit. Yeah. I wonder if you just take Gragas here. It's still a really high jungle priority. Ambition plays well on it. Or maybe the Thresh for Man Life and against Snowflower. Whoa. I don't uh, think you first think so. pick Vladimir here. <laughs> it's like, please counter me. <laughs> Hecarim would make a lot more sense, especially if they wanted, if they're going to ban the Gnar, the first pick Hecarim uh, likely to come in because, of course, Gnar, uh, after the release of Black Cleaver, if you build Frozen Mallet Black Cleaver, that is such a yeah. nasty build <laughs> against Hecarim where you can just pretty much abuse him in lane forever. But they're going to take the Maokai, actually. Yeah, I was wondering what about the Maokai because it was left open and. While the Hecarim does have some pretty high impact, of course, Maokai a little bit sturdier, and you can try to even things out a little better down the line in picks. Teemo and Amumu. Do it, Anarchy. <laughs> Stay true to your name. So Mickey is a TF player as well. I mean, we look at him and he, we think about Mickey, a lot of assassins and Twisted Fate, so. Yeah, Twisted Fate seems to be that champion that a lot of assassin players like, although he's not an assassin. It, it always seems to make his way in there. It's because you could roam even more effectively it's on true. Jobra. Very well, true. Hecarim and Gragas. It's like really pretty likely champions to be taken by Anarchy right here, just sticking with some more meta picks. Ixu isn't going to be CV Max today and uh, take that Rengar. <laughs> Please, no. It's terrible. Oh, the Thresh. All right, so they're still prioritizing it. Was not impressed during the qualifiers, but maybe it was just a bad day for Snowflower. And Ambition channeling his CJ roots. Going to the Amoon. <laughs> Do it. Bring back season two. <laughs> and then he just picked bear. Misfortune for space. <laughs> All right, yeah, Rek'Sai. More than likely going to be the pick here. And yeah, the Thresh, of course, you don't have to pick Hecarim this early either. So taking away that Thresh away from Mad Life, I think, probably a relatively decent call. Even though Mad Life has been recently prioritizing the Nautilus over Thresh. Yeah. If he has a choice between the two, he usually goes with the Nautilus. We're looking at the Nautilus being highlighted. Possibly. Rek'Sai, as you mentioned, most likely for the jungle when Gravis is taken away and Rek'Sai is still available. Uh, Mad Life, I believe his camera's frozen. I don't think he's staring that intently into Coach Sled's <laughs> eyes. <laughs> it's like, Coach, please notice me. <laughs> okay, Nautilus lock in. So, nothing really new here from CJ Antis. Of course, they hadn't, haven't had too much time between seasons to vary things up all that much. Just a couple of weeks, actually, because we are starting so soon here in Korea. Yeah compared to a lot of the other regions. And Urgot here, I mean, mostly to take it away from Urgot Nautilus if you do pick it, but I don't know if you really need to as much. I mean, it's scary, but there's no guarantee that Space will also pick Urgot. Yeah, I think you take definitely take the Hecarim Sivir right here, or you take Hecarim Lucian and actually force them to have a losing matchup if they go ahead and take the Sivir into the bottom lane. Oh, man. The top lane, Garen. Oh. <laughs> I was 
was getting all excited. You were for new See. Black Cleaver Garen. Is yeah. that what you were getting excited for, Chobra? You're yeah. a bad person. The Garen and the Wukong is coming back in the top lane. <laughs> it's happening. The Wukong is, is returning. You say Wukong, but you forget it's Wukong it's in Wukong. English. It's Wukong, yeah, that's right. It is Wukong in Korean. <laughs> Well, just proof that I know what ga what language you play the game in. <laughs> That's true. You got me. I do still play League in Korean right now. So the mid lane matchup. The question is, when you go to ESL, are you going to play switch the language to Korean for no. the English server? No, I'm still much much better with the English. I don't really read any of it in the Korean. I just read the patch notes in English, and I just assume I memorized everything <laughs> as I go forward. Base, pull, don't, please don't pull an OQ. But, oh! All right, well, you know what worries me the most is not that they picked Bit Vayne, but that Space has that grid that he always has when he's like, well, I'm gonna pick the champion I wanna play. <laughs> and it never worked out for CJ, right? He, he always also, did better. <laughs> we've seen Space play Vayne before, and it's not spectacular. Like, he's not, he's not a great Vayne player. Although I will say about this composition, at least they have Ziggs yes. for wave clear. Exactly. I'm like, I don't have a, so much of a problem with Vayne in this meta as I have a problem with Vayne casting it and the utter lack of wave clear. So at least they're backing it up with the Ziggs here. Yeah. So if they need to turtle until Vayne gets big, they have that opportunity. Obviously, there's going to need to be a lot of farming done here by CJ Entis to reach that late game. And are they actually going to play Yasuo? Something tells me not. Uh, yeah, I would think not. They have a lot of knockups for Yasuo all the same. And the shield will be quite effective in dealing with some of Zig's autos, but the Vladimir definitely gonna be a safer choice. Yeah, especially against such a heavy, you know, front line team from CJ with that Rex Side Maokai. And even Nautilus will get tanky up to a point. So picks all set, and I agree with you, the vein on paper doesn't seem as bad. It's just oh space. How will you do today? Which space has shown up to kick off the season for CJ? Will he give hope to the CJ fans, or are we back <laughs> to status quo? <laughs> oh, the vein, the vein on space. <laughs> I don't know about this one. He's just, space has not made his name on some of these more flashy mechanical AD carries. I, I think what well, space has, is at just his, in the other way. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Space is at his best. He's a team player on that Sivir, yeah. using a lot of that movement speed, uh, more positionally based as opposed to intensive mechanics. But we'll see how he can do. If he gets into that 2v2, he may have some issues, even with the big Nautilus in the lane as well. So will CJ lane swap here? I think they might. Maybe. Would it, would it be a bad idea? Of course, Hecarim is taking that smite this time. Around, still sticking with the smite teleport meta up top, not flash and teleport just for all the team play. He's gonna have his own farming to do there. And mid lane should just be a giant farm fest here. Both <laughs> mid laners actually taking ghost and flash, so no oh one boy. really worried about any kind of kill pressure here. <laughs> it's gonna be all about positioning in these team fights for right. Vlad and Ziggs. Well, we are all ready to get into game number one between CJ Entis and Anarchy on the second day here of Champions Summer 2015. Lots of Anarchy fans. <laughs> They're growing by the numbers. I still think they need to just revamp their entire outfits. <laughs> this is a Korean cast. <laughs> they just keep getting <laughs> weirder and weirder <laughs> on, these, <laughs> on these cheer boats. Mickey, I'm curious to see how he's going to do, because yesterday he just played all of those assassins. That's what we're familiar with him playing, mm -hmm. uh, just for the most part, over his the course of his time in China. And now, we're going to be pulling out the Vladimir right here, very different style of champion. He's not really going to be able to make roam plays. Yeah, not as much, but it, it, it will be a nice counter to the fact that CJ also wants to draw games, and Vladimir... We all know that if you go past those 40 minutes, Vladimir could single-handedly help carry the Anarchy team into victory. Yeah, and with the Hecarim as well, they have a lot of answers to Space's uh, vein right here in terms of getting on top of her, consistently dealing that DPS, especially with the speed boost from Sivir. So Space is going to have to have some pretty fancy footwork to get around 
what Anarchy is going to be throwing at him. They've got a lot of AOE that can hit the back line with the Gragasult and the Hecramult, so it's going to be pretty difficult, I think, for Space to come into this one. Yeah, there's a lot that you have to dodge, and not as much heal once they get on top of the vein. I mean, the Maokai can help heal a little bit, but that means you're also missing out on a front line. So some choices to be made here, mostly by Space himself, for CJ Antis. I think it's really mostly going to be Mad Life here who's on peeling duties mm -hmm. for Space, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure that this vein is in fact the best <laughs> choice. Probably would have probably would have rather have seen a, a Lucian here. Just go ahead, go toe to toe with the Sivir in lane, win your lane, win the game that way. Don't make it so hard on yourself. Have some wave clear, you know. What's the summer season? Gotta have the blockbuster <laughs> moments and the hype and the ten tension. And then I the just, disappointment. I'm just, I'm just wondering if Space is, uh, is thinking, well, even though Najin won on Vayne, they lost the series. So therefore, I will win all the games on Vayne today. The ego to show, battles are to back. Show Nod, to show Najin. We might not have Piglet and Imp anymore, but we still got Space and Oki with the ego battles here in the Korean AD carries. Uh, not, as, not the same, though. Piglet and Imp was the best. I do miss that rivalry. Yeah. Although, by the time that rivalry ended, Piglet was the only one really winning. <laughs> and then he was gone, and then Imp started winning everything. Well... Yeah. I mean, towards the end, yeah, towards Samsung the, towards was on the, the end, rise. Uh, I mean, Samsung White did absolutely blow out SK Telecom in the world's qualifiers. Did, yeah, that's what really mattered. <laughs> <laughs> if got the last laugh, that's what matters. <laughs> well, of course, SKT did win Worlds once too, so not too much to be sad about. And we are back in game, just making sure everything's fine. And looks like Mickey was having a slight connection issue, but his gear Seems now to be all fine. Running around in circles. Yeah. Took a lot of damage, but we're still only a minute and 20 seconds in. We're still double checking. And there we go. Coco is hitting him with bombs. Bad manner, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this looks like the problem was that it was actually also runes for Mickey that he. Left with the wrong runes. Yeah, it looks like he took armor. Penetration. Penetration <laughs> right there. That's not going to be too helpful. Helpful unless Well, the he kill pressure is here now, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> the auto kill pressure. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Uh, that that'll be a little rough, but Vladimir. I mean, in fact, it might might be okay because you're just going to try to safely farm in the first couple levels anyway. Yeah, it looks like he may have just uh, not selected a new rune page and yeah. uh, he ran with his oh, Zed runes from yeah. yesterday. I had to guess he's still using that same Tournament Realm account and is playing with his Zed runes. So this could be interesting for Mickey. All right. Problematic, but let's see how well he can do. So we're not going to get the lane swap after all. Everyone just heading down to their respective lanes, and for we, we are going to get a teleport quickly into the top from Ixu as he did go ahead and take a camp at Raptors. Just get that little bit of an advantage and grab some extra potions on his way back. So, nothing too exciting or extraordinary so far besides Mickey's presumably <laughs> Zed Rin page. Well, thanks for that, Mickey. Otherwise, we would have had really had nothing to talk about for the first five minutes or so, given, given the selections in this game. I mean, every lane is going to be a farm fest. At least one side prefers that farm fest, so... Yeah. We'll really wait to see what the junglers do. Ambition trying to make something happen early on here at level 2, and he does get the knock up onto Sang Yoon. They should be able to get out, but Nautilus getting the stun, and the Ignite goes down. Sang Yoon falls despite a flash and a heal. Ambition getting out alive with a sliver of health. Wow, and they burned all of the summoners from that lane, too. Ambition coming in with a little bit of a tricky gank right there, coming in behind very early on in this one, and that's going to be quite helpful. A little bit of extra gold, a little bit of extra farming time now for space as they look to push this wave straight into the turret. So that was, uh, that was a cute, cute little bit of jungle pathing right there. Yeah, very successful, getting the knockup right away as he comes out to, has helped deny any of that summoner escape from saying you. So back, going to collect a little bit of gold right there, but two long swords already grabbed by space, and 
Sang Yun in damage control now, second Doran's Blade. He'll be delaying his build quite substantially now in Vision. Goes over to his blue buff, finally picking that one up just a little bit late. Just farming right now from Lyra. Yeah, Mad Life taking this time to roam about and get some wards in the top side for his mid lane. As that bottom lane was going to be quiet anyway with Bane coming back and Thresh also going back to base. All right, so Ambition's next target will be this top side map. He doesn't have flash, and they saw him go into the brush. They just pinged him in top, so it doesn't look like that gank is going to be particularly successful, especially since the wave is pushing back towards Ixu's tower. I mean, they, they see him. They still see him. I think Ambition trying to see if he can still stay in that brush without getting caught. But the wave didn't push up since he was last spotted. Bottom lane space now able to actually exert some pressure himself with a slight uh, lead. Gold. Ambition really committing to this gank, actually. And Mickey. Oh. And Coco Ziggs has been such a pleasure to watch. Particularly his satchel charges have been really on point, constantly placing them to stun people into walls and the like. And it's been one of my favorite champions to see Coco play. And, you know, I used to hate Ziggs, Joe. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> you know why I don't hate Ziggs anymore? Why is that? Because new Baron makes it so that Zig can't just clear all the minions for free, Defense. even when you have a Baron buff. So you can actually, ooh, wow, nice dodge. Uh, go wrong right there. Fair oh, enough. Oh. oh, that's a lot of damage. Uh, but Coco will try to just last it out. Of course, Mickey having sustained built into his kit. So that was the great Zig's balancer, was new Baron buff. That right? makes sense. Because you can't just clear an entire wave with one rotation of spells anymore. Yeah, it does take a lot once you have yeah. that Baron buff. It takes quite a bit. So that is that is one of the nicer factors that we have going for us. One of the changes to the game. And it makes Zeke's a champion that is really fun to watch in team fights and can do a lot up to a certain point, but is no longer you're not able just to turtle until fifty minutes for free anymore. Thanks a lot, SK Telecom S. <laughs> oh easy. Yeah, you do definitely still want to take the lead first now with that Baron buff. With any champion, really, it does make a huge difference. And now that we're level six on both sides, Ziggs having used his uh, Mega Inferno Bomb here in mid lane, clearing things up, going back to buy. See the same from Mickey, I'm sure. Yeah, this is going to be the slow game. Yeah, we'll be waiting around until around 15, 20 minutes, maybe the first dragon. If anyone does, if Ambition maybe gets another gank here on bottom, they can try to speed things up a little bit through the dragon. But otherwise, we'll be pretty standard, quiet laning. Small advantages being taken in terms of CS. I see Rek'Sai this time, looks like not. Oh, oh, he missed his W! Shy. Miss clicker. <laughs> you dirty miss clicker. <laughs> dirty miss clicker. Look how much time you wasted for ambition. And Space should be able to get away with the tumble. Uh, nice try with the lantern there, but Space not taking any chances, pushing him back with the condemn. So early Cinder actually from Mixu right here. Normally you'd see that Skirmisher Saber coming in first, and instead just really wanting to push this one up and contest in terms of wave clear right now. So Hecarim actually getting that early Cinder, you know, it's a bit of a trade-off because now he can go back and farm these camps, but he doesn't get the extra gold that he would from having a machete item. Right. So it does give you, I feel like, more time to go ahead and take those Krugs just because you have that extra pushing power. You can back off and then return to lane after shoving it to the turret, but it's not going to give you that same amount of gold. So interesting trade-off in this game. Nice dredge line onto Snowflower, and Ambition's coming. They don't realize this yet. Madlife in a little bit of trouble with Teleport coming in from Ixu. He's coming in from behind. Madlife in a lot of trouble. Will get taken out with a quick charge. And there's an the ultimate from Ixu, but Ambition does burrow just in time. There's Summer to heal. Mickey shows up with Evil Blake. Ambition's going to go down. Mega Inferno Bomb not able to take out Ixu just yet. Shy gets blocked, and he's actually going to get pulled back by Snowflower. CJ in the midst of an absolute massacre and a nice explosive cast pushing Coco out. Beautiful before cast. Join. from Lyra. He saved it for so long right there, just bouncing Coco off the fight so they could finish it up. And what a late teleport, too, by Shy coming in there. Very strange decision making and also poor communication. Madlife going in and Ambition very, very late to that gank. So, uh, really well coordinated there by CJ. And 
Mickey with the really quick ghost roam to get down to the bottom side. As you look at how this one started, I mean, Mad Life was just tussling right there, waiting for Ambition to come in, but Space is still on the wave, and Ixu has the perfect positioning with that wave to get out. Then here comes the onslaught of Shadows, but Shy is just nowhere to be found during this time. Finally, TPing into the turret. Look at this. And see if he's. Yeah, this explosive cast was the real winner of this fight. I mean, look at that. Boom. Boom. Right there. <laughs> Double kill for Lyra. Well played. Yeah, Coco pinging Mickey going down too, but at that point you really couldn't do much. They were already on the retreat anyway. And Anarchy now with a decent lead, a K gold, but two kills ahead. Three assists for Simmer. Two kills for the Gragas, played by Lyra in the jungle. Uh, Mickey's still making some place on the map, even only at level yeah. six right there, finding a way to roam. Not shy about using those summoner spells either, so a so thousand gold advantage for Anarchy now. Big, big swing in their favor. Shy not going to be going for... You know, this could go Frozen Heart first. Wow, very aggressive build, but there's not going to be a lot of damage coming out of Vlad yet, so that's actually an okay item to get right off the bat. For now, now if he gets slowed down from here on out, that could result in some heavier damage later on. Nice deep ward from Anarchy that's not going to get spotted by Coco. They'll still read any movements from Coco and Ambition. Really good placement there. Yeah, Anarchy not able to take a dragon off that engagement though, so. Yeah, yeah they got a few kills, low. but weren't able to really convert that into a meaningful objective. And given the scaling that CJ Anders has, that's. It's a little bit of a concern. Dragon. Lyra wants to go ahead and solo this dragon right now. They do have pressure, and Mickey gonna come help. There is that ward from CJ spotting it, but are they gonna group up? Yeah, they're starting to come down from mid lane. You see the ping going down for Anarchy. It's pretty low. Anarchy already committed a lot, but there's Ambition starting to fight onto Mickey. Hebo play goes out to two people just to buy time for Lyra to finish things off, and then Mickey will get out safely. Great play by Mickey, actually. I love how Mickey is not afraid just to use his abilities. He's not that worried about the cooldowns. He will go ahead and burn summoners for the chance to make something happen. Burn his ult right there just to keep them off the objective. Here, yeah. exciting player coming back from the WE organization in China. Yeah, playing things really well. I mean, when you're playing Vladimir, you're playing to create that space for your teammates rather than going for the kills like you would with an assassin. And really shows his versatility in the mid lane so far on the second day of the new season. I just like his game sense as well and how fast he will respond to something. He doesn't mm. second guess himself. Just has a very good natural instinct for what to do in the moment to help his team or to make a play somewhere on the map. Faster on the roam than Coco that last time. Yeah. Them zoned out, went down with the ghost. Uh, CJ's still not in massive trouble, of course, just given their picks. But they do have to start worrying about the fact that Vladimir is also going to grow just as quietly and safely as the rest of the CJ team is a little worrisome. Yeah, the problem is, is that Anarchy really has to commit uh, to any kind of engagement. So they. As long as CJ can continue to poke them out first, CJ's goal should be just to poke and poke and poke with this Ziggs pick. And Anarchy has to go in with the Civil Roll or Grog Assault or get a pick with Thresh in order to make something work right here. And ambition in a ward war with the Earth, but he can't commit too much. He has to wait until he backs out. Now it's interesting too because this is a little bit of a revenge match from for Lyra, who used to be part of this <laughs> CJ Frost organization. Seems to happen a lot with the CJ organization. <laughs> All these guys coming back, trying to take well, wins away from them. I mean, he played with a lot of the players on this team. That's true. I mean, they were all there. Nero was there. And he's doing just fine for now. It was a little less active than Ambition, but made it count when he went down to bottom lane for the double kill. Uh, but CJ is keeping up just fine post fight in the bottom lane in terms of gold and CS. Harassment right there from Coco. Wow, Mickey. Side stepping a few of those. More coming in with the touchies. Wow. Uh, there we go. Coco usually not missing too many, but.
Cosmic Yell, so just keeping up. I mean, he did upgrade his boots right away. Uh, also has that Will of the Ancients, too, so I think he's set to go from here on out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the fourth one in a row. Wow, Mission shows up in top lane. Ixu gets caught coming in a little too much to a fight with Shy. He is going to onslaught Shadows out of there. Lyra shows up with Snowflower. We do have Mad Life coming in. Dredge Light onto Snowflower. There is the ult onto Ixu, but no one to put the damage down as Lyra takes one kill. Ambition has to flash out of that slow, and Mickey really low from a duel with Coco. Mega Inferno Bomb has been used for that. And Mad Life looking for Mickey. He gets the slow, and Mickey flashes away. Oh, does he heal out of it? No, the Ignite. <laughs> one last stick. Will. Kill off Vladimir. Yeah, Mad Life on the hunt right there, but Ixu still alive. Lyra here. They want to take down this tower, so even though they traded one for one, adv advantage probably will go to Anarchy. And they had nice hook from Mad Life. Oh, nice double knock of an Ixu. Oh, oh, tries to go back for the lantern, but ends up taking one extra hit from Mad Life. Yeah, it looks like he actually died to the damage over time from autoing Mad Life right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. From the, the Nautilus shield. Makes sense, and Mad Life's just freezing the lane as much as possible with his shield. He's pretty healthy, so that should stay until Shy gets there. Meanwhile, Coco will take the first tower in mid lane. And we'll see what CJ can make of that as the game moves forward. Wow, so nice defense there from CJ. They started off that gank, it looked like things were going sour, but Mad Life's roam does pick up that kill, and in the end, they're able to defend the turret, pick up another kill for themselves, and get that mid lane tower down. So CJ turns that situation to a preferable one. Mickey already with the distortion enchantment as well. He's really looking to roam <laughs> with that ghost. Yeah, well, he's doing a pretty good job so far. Of course, that last time Coco put a good stop to that. Yeah, Coco did an, an excellent job of preventing Mickey from being in a position to roam much at all under those circumstances. And you can see, even though Anarchy has some great deep wards in, and that's something we saw a lot yesterday is Anarchy warding for an amateur team is extremely good. Yeah. Now too, and Dragon is up in a minute. We'll see who takes vision there. So far, neither team, uh, all their wards expiring or getting taken out around the Dragon Pit. So, who's going to put the focus down first? Teleport up for both top laners. So that's going to be a big point too. And who gets to preserve it a little bit longer, or who forces it out rather? Quick duel in top lane on the map, but nothing really happening in terms of health. Now, Space also having been left alone with all this roaming from Mad Life, but he's been ahead in CS consistently and doing fine for himself. Of course, Snowflower roaming at the same time has lessened the kill pressure against the Vayne. Yeah, and it really has just been about farming down there. I mean, we see Space having that same CS advantage that he took from that first yeah. blood gank right there, and otherwise it's just been dead even in the bottom lane. Not a lot of priority coming in right there, so. Oh. Nice spell shield by Sang Yu. Snowflower ready to turn things around. That could have been really dangerous with Coco and Ambition coming towards the bottom lane. Would have led right to a free dragon for uh, CJ, I'd imagine. But CJ is still taking that time also to get Vision all across the river. They're going to spot. Oh, teleport coming in from Ixu. Early teleport in with the home guard. He's wow. charging in for an attack onto Mad Lion, but then he'll just back out as if nothing happened. Well, they really want to go ahead and do this, so Shy still trying to recall. He doesn't have a lot of mana. He wants to complete an item before they actually go in. Scuttlecrab oh. is in the favor of CJ Entis. And there's a teleport coming in onto the tunnel. Ambition not able to steal the dragon, and CJ does get blocked by the box from Thresh. Ambition got to go down first by Ixu, but there's also Shadows backwards as Lear tries to chase down Space. Space uses his Blade of the Ruined King. He's still alive. He's going to, no, not get the kill onto Lyra. Finally does with Ziggs' help. Coco and Shy also on the run. Space, but Space is split in enemy territory. And Shy and Coco not going to do too well for themselves either. Boomerang Blade, as Space is going to get noted. There's just a flash from Sang Yoon, taking no chances there. And a nice play from Anarchy, securing the dragon. That's their second one. Shy's teleports today have been so late. He just isn't there to have a presence in these bottom lane ganks. He hasn't been there in these team fights. I mean, Ixu TP'd early, sure, and, but they had the crab. They should have had the position on that dragon to start things out, and instead, they lose that little team fight right there and the dragon going one for three as Anarchy finds it pretty easy. Ambition's already cut off right there. Look, <laughs> Shy is only coming in right now that Ambition is dead by the time he actually joins the engagement. Ixu's gonna hold backwards just to stay alive, and Vicky zoning out in the front right there. Lyra will go down 
two zigs, but they're able to chase down space. Song Yun and Ixu running him down in the end. Ward in the brush, and Ixu's just gonna go back. Doesn't want a chance. And Song Yun will go for the flash right here and then go ahead and spell shield just in case that condemn comes in. Yeah. Really good explosive cast from Mira this time too, separating all of CJ uh, outside of that threshold. You know, to some extent, I wonder if CJ slightly underestimating how organized and how quick Anarchy is in their team decisions. Uh, at the same time, a lot of credit to Anarchy. I mean, even without a coaching staff, they do seem to be really on top of their game sense and communication. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm very impressed by what we've seen from this team so far, given their circumstances. And here we go. They are going to go ahead and take down the tier one in the bottom lane, furthering that old advantage they have to a couple of K. Now, pretty healthy. He does have his full skirmish of Saber prepared with the Cinderhold. Now, he's going for the Trinity Force as his next item. This is a bold pickup, but he's doing well against Shy in that lane, so he's going to be able to be a bit, little bit of a bully right there. And it's just his primary job to kill this Vayne. Yeah. And he can get on top of Ziggs actually pretty easily, too. Ziggs doesn't have a whole lot of feel for himself when it comes to a Heck Rift. If you have to use that Satchel Charge early, limits the amount of crowd control you're actually going to have during the team fight. Lyra doing a good job of just zoning Coco out right there, forcing Coco to use his ultimate on the wave just to clear it. Yeah, and they are, you know, CJ's still just trying to buy time for space, space left alone in that bottom lane to farm up freely, but they're giving up a lot because of that. They can't contest his blue buff as well. The middle tower will still get pressure. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you, Lyra. <laughs> a little odd. But he'll secure that blue buff just fine. Trading turret for turret as well, so everything remaining even on that front. Space just furiously attempting to farm right now, but he's still a little bit behind in terms of that CS. Yeah, and eventually Anarchy will go towards that bottom to clear it up. Not a big wave threat as it pushes him against cleared by the tier two turret. And otherwise, I mean, it's gonna be another wait until one of the teams sets up for a good team fight. Right now, Anarchy in favor to do so, just in terms of the pressure they're exerting already across the map, and the fact that they are ahead in terms of gold. gold. Yeah, so here we go. Mickey back in the mid lane right now, just patiently clearing out these waves. They have their sights set on that mid tier one, the last remaining outer from CJ Entis Coco has been there with that Ziggs wave clear the entire game so far, so not too much. Coming in and Space looking for a vein gank right here. Yeah, this is very Piglet style. And they're gonna go on to Ixu, but he should be able to just charge away. That's fine though, they have the minion wave here, so yeah. they just want the turret right now. If they can get it, Ambition also joining up with Mad Life just to make sure they can take it down. And it's very valuable. They give the local gold over to just space as well. So they're really trying to charge him up, get in that static shiv so he can split push a little bit more effectively. Yeah, but Anarchy responding very well. Lyra coming in from behind to secure this tier one in mid. The wave does get cleared, so they have to watch out. Lyra gets pulled back into under tower. He's pretty tanky. Explosive cast used for the escape. They got some nice damage down on the Lyra though. He is yeah. tanky. I mean, he has those three kills, helping him pick up a lot of items, including that early locket. But still gonna be a little bit problematic. Okay, so Mickey is gonna try and split push. He is the answer to the split pushing of Vayne, uh -oh. it would appear. This could go really poorly for either side. Ghost. Right, see Mickey starting with the ghost. He goes in and he oh he pulls right as the condemn is about to come out. Space still alive. He flashes over, oh. but look at that damage from the Hemo Plague along with the transfusion from Mickey. Nice finish. Wow. So just popping the Hemo Plague right there. Mickey just continues to outplay people <laughs> in these little wow. skirmishes. Has been. I, I, Really surprised he's willing to play Vlad this aggressively. He's such an entertaining player to watch. Yeah, that was really well played too. And holding off on the pool, trying to bait space into pricing the condemn right away, but just when he decides that he can just pull for the damage, goes in and forces the space out of, or the flash out of space, not the space out of flash. <laughs> well, Coco here going for the Luton's Echo early on. 
So just more and more poke damage. I think that's really a great choice against the team that they're dealing with. They know they need that poke in order to take objectives. So let's go ahead. And CJ trying to protect that pick. Nero will get out just fine. And oh, but go. here's a counter engage. A nice flash stun and the explosive cast onto Coco. Coco caught amongst the enemy team. Does go down after the Mega Inferno Bomb and Snowflower gets the kill onto space. Just getting eliminated. Nice onslaught of shadows to separate Shy and Ambition. What a team fight from Anarchy, picking up three kills, losing none on their side. A Anarchy is just so decisive as a team and mechanically skilled as well. Following up on that great engage, Lyra saw that opportunity for the flash body slam onto Coco and just took it, catching Coco out of position. But I mean, he wasn't even that out of position right there. It was just a great play from Lyra. Yeah, really good decision also from Sang Yu to activate on the hunt right away to guarantee that they can get the fight. And we do have Dragon going over to CJ most likely, but Anarchy wanting to secure this Baron right away. And look at this too. Mickey comes in, interrupts oh, wow. the Dragon attempt right there while his team is doing Baron. So controlling both objectives at the same time. Anarchy's play has been very clean. And yeah, Shy really hasn't been there with the teleports or the responses this game, but I have to say, you can't really underestimate Anarchy because they have been playing a very punishing style of League of Legends where they continue to take advantages. So look at this here. Now, I mean, that's just a great play from Lyra. They line up with a stun right there, knocking Coco back into the rest of the team. And Ixu already there. Again, Shy has to TP into that team fight, but by the time he does, there's already one person dead. They're able to take out Shy pretty darn easily. Really well done. Snowflower also getting that Ignite onto space right there after the explosive cast, securing that kill, keeping Vayne out of the fight. Vayne still does want to farm a little bit, so. Not the biggest threat to begin with. There's a knock up onto two members of Anarchy, and with Ziggs, they will chase Anarchy off for now. But here comes Mickey. Baron Buff still on all five members of Anarchy. It's a lot of pushing power coming in with the Sivir and Vlad. Well, Anarchy also has every opportunity to 1 3 1 here with Vladimir and Hecarim as well. So it's not really a great need for them to group. In fact, they should split Mickey off into the top lane. So there's a little bit of a mistake right here coming in because there's a big wave that's already developed for them in the top side. and. That's what they need to be focusing on in order to maximize their pressure and really take advantage of their team composition and Vlad's split pushing potential. But they're actually just gonna let Shy clear that one out. That's a bit of an error, bit of a mistake. Yeah, not taking every advantage they can, but still taking two tier twos. And Lira also taking that blue buff away once again from CJ. He's been taking control of all the blue buffs in this game. Really taking advantage of the fact that Vlad also doesn't need a blue. And that's gonna affect Ziggs a lot too, even so he has a chalice, or rather an Athene's. It's interesting to talk about Lyra too, because he's a player that actually had a lot of hype back in the day, but he was on the team, the KT Arrows team with Mach Noon that failed to make champions, and then he was on Frost and probably Frost's uh, most weak state uh, when they were dealing with a lot of mid lane substitutions, they were struggling with GBM, and then with uh, Mach Noon later on. So this is a player who I, I Oh, wow. Nice hook on Ambition. Lots of damage to him. That's going to chase up the entire CG team. But there's a flash forward by Mickey with a Hemoblade. Nice explosive cast. Will secure a kill onto Madlife. Mickey is in a little trouble under that tower after the Zonias. But he's still going to get out alive thanks to the minion wave with all the heals and Lyra zoning out for him. But can Lyra get out? Space is pretty low, so he can't pursue. That's just really good team by Nice onslaught of shadows to take the tower and then escape from the inhibitor turret in mid. Anarchy just making all the plays in this game against CJ Entis. continuing to dodge seemingly every bouncing bomb from Ziggs over the course of this wow. game. And you know, CJ needs to bring their A game if they want to beat these punk Anarchy kids who have <laughs> come from China, come back from China with a vengeance. Yeah, this is really impressive actually. Really makes you wonder how strong is LZIM at this point? LGIM <laughs> uh, or LZIM LZ yeah, yeah, yeah. if they've beaten Anarchy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's and they crushed Anarchy too. Yeah. I mean, those were not close <laughs> games. But again, Ixu is doing a lot more yes. work than CV Max Absolutely. was doing. So that's a pretty big change. And you know, interestingly, during the interviews yesterday too, they said that all their shock calling or a lot of their shock calling was coming out of the top lane. Yeah. So. Not only does it seem like they have uh, a more standard player in at the top lane position right now, uh, they also 
are relying on Ixu to do a lot of the shot calling with them. So I think that's two pretty huge changes that they made between, I mean, this past weekend and yeah. right now. I mean, it probably helps a lot. Imagine playing solo queue. Would you rather listen to a top lane Hecarim or a top lane Rengar? I mean, I would, <laughs> I would listen to the Hecarim any day. <laughs> to be fair to CV Max, he is the original top lane Hecarim here in Korea, so. Fair. <laughs> Anarchy, they did end the, the Baron buff did end for them, but Dragon coming up in two minutes. They have three stacks and none for CJ. CJ starting to get a little bit concerned about the Dragon stacks here, let alone being behind 9k in gold. And two inhibitors, or one inhibitor open the top one, was pressured quite a bit, but it did dive, so the mid lane inhibitor also opened CJ a lot of pressure. They're starting to run out of that time to help space grow into a monster carry. And then they still have the job of protecting him so that he can execute all the kills. Going back to Lyra, I just think that this is a player that never really got a fair shot uh, on the teams that he was on due to a lot of factors that didn't really have a whole lot to do with him. And so it's nice to see him come back from China from the OMGB team and perform now. Oh, oh boy. CJ starting a fight onto Lyra, but was that really the best choice as Ixu comes back in? Mad Life super low. Nice explosive cast disrupts the entire fight and leaves Shy alone in the front lines. But Mickey gets contained, but there's the Zonias and there's the Oslo Shadows to try to protect Mickey. Mickey is still alive. Right there with the Ghost and the Hook not hitting onto Ziggs, but at the end of the day, it gave them enough time and space to take out the inhibitor. Sangyun also still pretty healthy. Seems very mechanically impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that two of them are escaping with 100 to 200 health really says a lot about their team communication and individual mechanics in terms of avoiding damage with this. Oh, there's nice a call go. Go. Boomerang Blade does get avoided with the flash, but Ambition takes a lot of damage, saying you flashes for a nice wow. lantern to help keep him alive after that so, try for a kill. Now, Sofla are really kind of justifying those early Thresh picks in this game because his presence in this team, in these team fights on Thresh, he's created a lot of opportunities, nearly picking up another couple kills right there. Some fancy hooks and lanterns. Yeah, and Songyu, just a level of trust right there for Songyu to flash forward and go in, and then Snowflower's positioning to drag him right back out. Prevents CJ from doing anything about this dragon and Anarchy. Well, they're in a very heavy lead, nearly 10k gold, four stacks of dragon, and Baron coming up in 20 seconds. We did see pings going down there, CJ trying to finally get a blue buff for Ziggs. Will they contest this Baron or at least hang around to make sure that it doesn't get taken? I Vayne. think they have to. They don't have much of a choice. Uh, Vayne is in the mid lane right now trying to deal with some of these super minions. And there's Ixu's just going to go back to base and sit there with home guards while they contemplate and engage. <laughs> I mean, Vayne also hasn't been able to get more damage because of having to get home guards after all that push in mid lane. Ambition gets some damage on him by Lyra. Lyra just pressuring in, and they're waiting for the teleport coming in from behind, and Ixu does get stopped by Mad Life, but they're still going in. There's the chase on Star Shadows, and Explosive Cast keeps the CJ team divided. Not as much damage following through, but there's a nice hook onto Mad Life, secures one kill, and Anarchy, will they continue to push through? Looks like they'll have to back off. No objectives to take here in the mid lane. Nice try with the Mega Inferno Bomb, but most of it getting negated with the Locket and the pull from Vladimir. Wow. Well, that was a very well set up and communicated engage from Anarchy right there. Ixu had a lot of patience. They used that minion wave to cut off their opponent since CJ had to deal with the Super Minions in the mid lane. Snowflower is still there playing around the speed shrine, trying to find that, and here we go again. Oop. Nice try onto Ambition, but Ambition will just burrow out of there. Anarchy once again has another Baron buff, and soon enough we might even have five stacks of Dragon, which will probably spell the end of the game for CJ. Well, I think TMZ just started taking Anarchy seriously. <laughs> I mean, yeah. their ability to outplay some of these top teams in Korea is impressive at the very least, and so you can't fool around on a vein against a team composition with a Sivir and a Hecarim. I mean, you'd be I mentioned this at the beginning of the game, but there's a lot of ways to get on top of this vein right here for Anarchy, and they're doing yeah. a wonderful job of just completely shutting down space. Last Whisper does finally come out for space, but no defense items. The Manchis or a Guardian's Angel to keep himself alive, or a Quicksilver even at that. Uh, it's also Sun Yoon is 
a bloodthirster <laughs> up, a full core item up on him right now. So it's not yeah. really comparable. CJ, unless they pull out some sort of miracle, will certainly going to lose this game, finding themselves behind 12K at 34 minutes. Very shocking result. Maybe it's just the destiny of the new rookie team every season. They're going to go undefeated in the first round, get enough wins to secure a spot of the finals. The Anarchy's played this game very well. They're playing very well. Lear gets caught, but he's taking enough that he doesn't mind saying you get some free hits onto the inhibitor turret. And of course, there is that cannon minion with the Baron buff. Just chipping away one shot by one shot. Meanwhile, bottom lane does get pushed down by Ixu. No one there to stop it. Space is heading down there, but so is Mickey. Space has to watch out. The inhibitor is not going to be saved as Mickey shows up for some threat. And looks like Anarchy looking for the final push here as they take down all three inhibitors. CJ knows they have to start a fight. It's an absolute mess at the Twitch. Uh, the double towers, but Snowflower getting caught under the double towers at the Nexus. Mad Life escaping just in time, but Space, he has to leave the fight, can't do more damage. Lyra still at half extra health with the shield, and Mickey just trying to pull for some extra damage. Buying time for Sang Yoon and Ixu to finish off the Nexus and get a win for Anarchy in today's match. Well, praise Helix. <laughs> Anarchy seems to have lived up to their name and thrown some chaos into the standings here early in the season. I love the fact that Mickey was playing something so different than what he yeah. played yesterday and finding very creative ways to play Vladimir to use his kit for a lot of high damage assassinations and Mad Life, not looking too happy right there, but that is a big win for Anarchy as they roll to their third straight victory in two days. Just do not want space to be smiling and pick some man. It's not, not a good place to be. Mad life's probably space like this is, guy. Space <laughs> exists to suffer, not, not to play vain and be happy. But well played by Anarchy. 